Hello again. Right, back in the garage. Today I'm going to be changing the chain and the sprockets on this Tiger Sport 1050. Now I'm no mechanic, this is just how I do it. So um, if you copy this, then please read up on your own bike and do this at your own risk um, or get someone who knows what they're doing to do it. But this is how I do it. And uh, it should be the same on the majority of bikes. Now, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I've had two bikes with the chain on this side and the sprocket nut is your standard lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. I haven't tried it on one where the chain is on this side of the bike, such as on this Thruxton, but my suspicion is that's the opposite way around. So that's what we're doing today. First port of call is to take this sprocket cover off. Now, I like cleaning my bike and I clean that regularly, but when you take that off, there's going to be loads of crud underneath and behind the sprocket, there'll be a whole load of crud. So make sure you've got some stuff to clean that up. Next job is to get this tab washer knocked flat and then see if I can get this nut off. So I've hammered that flat and now get my socket on it and see if I can make it budge. Right, to get the sprocket nut off, I've already done that, forgot to film it, silly me, but this is what you want. So you can either buy an electric cordless um, impact driver, or this is just one um, that hooks onto a compressor. Buying one of these guns are about, I don't know, 25 quid with a couple of sockets, but you have to buy obviously the right size one for your front sprocket. Makes that job a one person job. If you're doing it with a breaker bar, and a socket, you will need someone to stand on the back brake while you uh, try and get that nut off. And it's so much easier with one of these. So before I break the chain, and with this being single-sided swing arm, it's different if it's a double-sided swing arm. Um, if it's double-sided, you wanna shove your wheel forward, loosen your axle bolts off and shove that wheel as far forward as you can. With this being single-sided swing arm, it's a simple case of loosen that nut and use a C-spanner clockwise, we'll shove the wheel forward. You'll see the chain go slack. This should come off. There we go. And we'll be able to clean up all around behind here. Get all that crud out of there. Give the nut a quick bit of TLC as well. Just gotten most of the surface rust off, not all of it, but most of it. Uh, this is the old sprocket. This is the new sprocket. So if we look at that one, you can see that is definitely shark finned, worn. When I install these, I always install them with the writing facing outwards. Just in case there's a difference, there doesn't look to be. But in case there is, writing facing outwards, that's usually how the manufacturer wants it. So that's the front sprocket back in place, but not tightened up yet. It's just on there to make sure everything fits. I do have to remember to fold that washer over a bit. And then we'll tighten that up first, fold that over. But next job is to take the rear sprocket off. Bolts out and the sprocket just came off. So again, looking at that, it's definitely worn. So these nuts need to be tightened up to 30 Newton meters. All right, sprocket on, all torqued up. For Tiger Sport owners, in the back you need a T30 torx bit so when you buy a new chain it's always best to buy a quality one i always go for did um, x-ring chains there's different kinds you can search the internet to find out the difference but a good quality chain is important because if that thing snaps uh, it's going to wreck your engine and probably your leg so you don't want that always buy quality never buy cheap ones when you get your chain it comes with a link that needs to be riveted 
and some grease and some little o-rings or x-rings as they are um, I'll show you that going on together but first of all I'm just going to hook this around the sprockets and uh, get it so I'm in a position where I can join it all right I've just run the chain around the sprockets as you can see there's plenty of room there to get that riveted So this is a chain tool, you have this part for pushing out the old rivets, but well, I prefer to cut the chain to be honest, I've had limited success with this. This end, with you see the dimple in, that is for splaying the end of the rivet on the chain, and that's the last thing you do. This has two positions, you got A and B. In A, you are pushing, well, you, you use position A, because if you look at A, it's lined up with that hole. That's used for popping out rivets, but it's also used to push this plate on the chain, which clamps this bit in place. And then in position B, it's off to one side, which is where it's pressing against the open end of the rivet with this piece, which then splays that end out. So you do have to be careful how, how tight you do this part of it, because you can't over tighten it. So you do need to use some um, micrometers or something to measure how far you've pushed it on, or just use your fingers to feel, is that plate flush with the one next to it? So... I've got my o-rings, four of them, I've got the plate that goes from the back to the front, the plate that goes on the front, that's the back to the front one, front one, o-rings, and a little bag of grease, and it's important that you get this grease on, um, because the grease gets trapped inside the o-ring and inside this chain mechanism, um, which is why it's important you get it in because if you didn't have that you'd get corrosion in there and this would become a weak link instead of as good as the other links so it's a bit fiddly to show this on camera but I will grease those up and pop them through the chain so now the chain is ready to be riveted that is in position A I'm just going to slide it along try not to drop that rivet off it's really important that you get this in the right position and it's not at the moment you can feel it because the back sort of hooks over the two rivets and the front also hooks over the two rivet locations and that feels like that's right so now we need our big spanners a 27 and a 19 And we just start tightening this up. Not too much at first. So now we'll back it off and check. So, so far that looks all right to me. So to rivet with the tool, this end does the riveting. It goes over here and splays these ends out. And you literally compress it till it hits the plate, which means you've got the right amount of displacement. So that goes in there. You don't need this bit. So you want to be in position B. Yeah, you can see that's completely over the rivet on both sides. So now we just tighten that off. Hopefully in there, that's sat on the rivet on both sides. So just take that up. There you can see they've splayed out nicely.
Right, so I've just put the C-spanner back on here, that way up, to get the chain to about the right tension. Need it on the ground to do that properly, so we'll leave that till very last. Right, that's the tab washer knocked up, torqued up, and everything ready to go on the front. I'm going to put the cover back on now. Right, that's the job done. I'm no professional. That took me many more hours than it should have if you knew what you were doing properly or had the all right tools in the right place. That is not a job for someone who's nervous. So if you're not very mechanically minded, don't try this. Um, if you've got good experience, then what I would maybe advise is buy a spare split link for your chain because that's the one area you're likely to mess up. A few more things to come on this Tiger 1050. Going to do its uh, oil and filter change soon. And then rather than pay the £800 for the full service, um, I'm going to do that myself. The only thing I'm going to get done externally is maybe the valve clearances because I haven't got a clue how to do that. But um, throttle balancing, all of the oil changes, the greasing of the bearings and so on looks quite straightforward. So I'll give that a shot. If you want to see some more of this stuff and see me riding my bike places, then uh, why not hit the subscribe button? If you like this, hit a like. If you didn't, say why, leave comments. That's uh, fine. I enjoy reading the comments and learning from other people's experiences. So for now, it's Gordon from North Biker saying uh, see you later. Hopefully see you in the next one. Keep riding and keep safe.